My name is Ty French, and these are my rants. Welcome to Ty Rants. Welcome back to Ty Rants. My name is Ty French, and these are my rants. Today, I am joined by the one, the only, Josie Van Dyke from Weekly Trash. Hello, 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 everybody. Oh, my I'm gosh. I'm so excited. How are you? I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. I feel really cool. Oh, my gosh. Whatever. I, I feel, feel really cool. I feel really cool. You're way cooler than me, especially in the podcasting sphere. No, 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 no. We talked about this on my pod, how you're a model. Oh, you're my gosh. Shut famous. Up. You go to no. parties with Justin Bieber, no. Beyonce. <laughs> like, fuck. Okay. I will give you that one. That one, I yeah. bring up every episode. You should. And I will not let it go. No, it's your Roman Empire. Oh, my gosh. Well, how are you? I'm so good. I'm good now that we're back chatting. You were just here. I know. So I'm going to be on <laughs> Weekly Crash. Okay, wait. I didn't know that, like... I, did I spoil the the fun? It wasn't no, supposed you, to be a surprise. No, you spoiled it a little bit, but it's okay because it okay. kept everyone on their toes. Okay, okay, good. Because when I announced who was going to be the guest for this week, yeah. everyone was saying Ty. Okay, Ty okay. French, Ty French, Ty French. So it really threw them off. Okay, okay, so good. So it was good. So they know you're coming, but they don't, they don't know, know when. when. It's a and surprise. Now, and now they're just confused. I'm lurking. You never yeah. know when I'm going to yes, pop in. Yes, but I had people message me be like, Ty spoiled that he's coming on. Oh and I'm like... God. See, I didn't know it was like a no, surprise. it's not that big of a secret. And I've got a blabber mouth. So we I was just it. running my mouth. I was like, oh, I can't wait to go on. Yeah, no, I loved it. It was oh like a shout out. If anything, it you were like giving me free I'm ads. Promoting. I'm promoting. I'm Thanks. ready. I'm ready. Thanks. Keep doing it. Um, well, so you're here in California. I'm here in good old sunny California. Welcome to my hood. Except it was raining when I got here. So rainy. It's been so rainy. Kind of chilly. I We are, if you're watching on YouTube, surprise, we're on YouTube today. And <laughs> I'm filming in her Airbnb because you guys know the Thai, the, 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 the Thai apartment, it's, it's getting a little janky. It's giving budget. And I walked yeah. in. And her setup was nice. So I was like, I'm just going to record over here. You know, it's decent. No, the it's lighting cute. situation's not the best. I thought when I was looking online that the, there's a window like right here. Mm. And so like light was going to yeah. be direct yeah. on us. But that wasn't We're the situation. Good. We're good. Staying tuned for what we looked at like earlier. So anyway, so yeah. I'm going to be on Weekly Trash eventually. Yeah, March. I think it's March 16th. Oh, okay. So it's March... not a surprise anymore. No, no. no. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Okay, so okay just really kidding. Um, I don't know when. I have surprise? no idea when you're coming on. It's actually a surprise I'm for me. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm su surprised. No, surprise. surprise. Well, we'll surprise. let you know. I'll post, obviously, when it goes up. But it was a really fun episode. Sorry, you guys. My voice is gone. But like we said, it's sexy. Thank you. Thank you. It makes me sound a little bit straighter. I was hoping yeah. that, you know, maybe after I ate lunch, it would come back to me. I feel like it's getting worse throughout the day. What would you have for lunch? I just had a sweet green salad. Okay. Everyone talks about sweet green. Have you is never been? Like a California thing? Um... It's a California thing. I know they have it in New York as well. I think they have okay. it in like bigger cities. Okay. The more popular places. Yeah. Maybe not cool Salt Lake. Hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've got to go. Do you like salads? Yeah. Oh my I God. like a salad that's like not a salad. Like don't give me cucumbers. Don't give me tomatoes. Don't give me anything that's a um, Excuse me, ma'am. What do you want in the salad? <laughs> I want lettuce dressing and a shit ton of meat. All right. Okay. Okay. So go. Do you like like... Cilantro, oh, limey yes, vibes. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. They have yes, this yes, salad yes, called yes, the guacamole yes. greens. Sounds delicious. Whenever I go on like a full bender of a weekend, yeah. I, I, I need it to bring me back to life. Okay. Like it's like a very fresh feeling, you Feels know? Feels good. Like I got home from the airport yesterday and I had a pizza hut. And so I woke yeah. up and I was like, you know what? Grease. I need nutrition. Yeah. Please. Is that have meat in it? I, yeah, chicken. Chicken. Okay, I can take yeah. some chicken. Yeah, yeah, get some chicken. Because I am a hell of a girl in Utah because I like Cape Rio, Costa Vida. Oh my gosh. The, that's so the Utah. The cilantro ranch. Oh I'm my dead. Gosh. Like tell me you're from Utah without telling me you're from so Utah. So I was just going to say we're fellow Utahns here. Yeah. 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 What part of Utah do you live in? I live in Draper. Good old Draper. So you're Draper. Utah, Utah thick of it. Oh yeah. I was actually born in Florida. Oh okay. Lived there for five years. Okay. So I don't really remember it. Yeah, so right. I have to say Utah. Yeah. I wish I could say Orlando, Florida, though. Right, right. Sounds way cooler. You could just say it. I won't I'm tell. I'm from Orlando. They're like, yeah. what part? And I'm like, Orlando. <laughs> They're like, what's your favorite thing there? You're like, Orlando. <laughs> the grass? <laughs> Literally. Actually, the grass is gross. And why is it that in places like that that are tropical, the grass is like not grass? It's like, I don't know if I've ever been to Orlando. You haven't? I don't Even think Even in so. California, the grass is weird. Don't come for my grass, okay? <laughs> like, it's not grass. It's like... 
Like as opposed to what? Like, well, Utah is just Utah, like it's perfectly like, it's just manicured. Like perfect grass. Yeah. Here it's like coarse. And... When I grew up in Utah, like I just didn't appreciate its like beauty. And then now yeah. I go back and visit. And I'm like, oh, it's literally Switzerland. Yeah. Well, and I don't hike. I don't ski. I don't snowboard. I don't do any of the things that Utahns are supposed to do. Literally, I lived there basically my whole life. Never skied. No. No. Nothing. No. Like I, I know there's French fry and pizza. But it's because I don't think like we weren't rich. So no, a thousand <laughs> That's why we did it. <laughs> a thousand percent. That's why we did it. Yeah, no, it was so expensive. Wait, so you didn't really move around like no. it within Utah. No, I you moved lived there at five. in my parents live in the same house no. that they bought when we moved. Oh my god. Which I don't think that was the plan. The right. plan was for them to like make a lot of money and like move. It was like right. a starter home. My mom was pregnant. And because I just have one sister. So yeah. me and my sister, she was pregnant. We moved into this cute little house. Technically, it's a Sandy house, not okay. Draper, Sandy. Um, super cute. But then 9-11 hit. My dad owns a travel business. Oh, gosh. And it went pff, tanked in the toilet. I mean, he still does travel stuff, but yeah. it never took off because of that. Ugh. And in Florida, he was a travel agent and like did really well. Right. So he was like, oh, I'm going to bring it to Utah. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. And then shit hit the fan. <sighs> Life got crazy and we got really poor. That's so, so annoying. Yeah. Like why? Don't you love that when your parents just get poor? <laughs> like that's <laughs> yeah. how it happened. We, we talk about this on our yeah. episode as well, but it's crazy because I have a ton of older siblings and like they grew up when we were rich yeah. and I'm like, I feel like I got gypped because the second I like hit middle school, it was like, no money. See ya. Yeah. And that's like the time where you get bullied yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And that's the time where it's like, you realize what money is yeah. before that. I was like, I don't care. But I will say my parents did a good job at hiding it. Like I'm sure they went oh. into major debt trying to get me true religion yeah. jeans. Oh, <laughs> the way that my mother probably like w w broke a hip trying to get us true religion jeans. No, -E for real. Oh my gosh. Going to buckle, oh getting the miss gosh. me jeans. Okay. And then did you ever Hardy. hear of that website? I, I don't know what it was, but there was this like website. AliExpress. Was that what it was? It's like a DH gate. It was. Thing? Yes. But like it was so sketch. I probably got a virus on a computer trying to order these fucking true religions. <laughs> probably. So I think funny. it was AliExpress. I, I think AliExpress still exists. No, that's the thing. I've heard of that now, but. Oh my gosh. But no, God. I was the girl that like, and I, I think it's funny because I had no money, but I cared so much about materialistic things. Right. Like I wanted to show everybody that I could hang. Right. Like, oh, Juicy Couture. Like I, yeah. I can do that. Like I can buy that. No, I fucking can't. Yeah. I had an Ed Hardy bedspread. <laughs> like that's how much yeah, I, no one's like, going in the bedroom like nobody cares no one cares no but it's like we had to overcompensate yeah because we were down we were a little insecure about it do you it. feel like like are you still pretty materialistic oh my gosh like yeah. I'm the most materialistic no like I'm a cunt <laughs> <laughs> no literally like <laughs> I am the most materialistic person and I just admit it I accept it yeah embrace it you know I, I I've now gone to a point I think maybe also because like the more things that you buy like yes it's like materialistic whatever yeah. but like when you buy nice stuff and you invest in like designers and stuff then you go to forever 21 and you're like i'm gonna wash this one time it's and ruined. it's gonna be a cheese grater it's no. gonna be destroyed it's gonna be in little shreds little pieces yeah it's gonna so, look horrible uh, it's easy to get wrapped up in it but i will say i'm not i'm probably not as materialistic as you just because i can't afford to be like <laughs> I, have, I. I have three fucking children the, yeah, right <laughs> so right. for me i spend my money on my car right. my my bags. Yeah. But like clothes, like I, I can do some like H and M. I'm not, yeah. I don't think I own you gotta a mix single, it in. I don't think I own like a single designer clothing piece. Oh, interesting. Because, you gotta change that. Because you but, deserve but it. the reason why is because my kids will ruin it. Right. right. I, when my kids are like 13 and up, I'm going to be the bougiest bitch yeah, yeah, yeah. you've ever seen. Yeah, because you're like, go get a job if you want to yeah, buy anything yeah. for yourself. And like, you're not going to spit up on me. You're not right. going to shit on me. I can wear whatever I want. You're yeah. at school all day. Yeah. So I'll be dressed to the nines. Oh but right gosh. now, like, I'm good with like H&M budget. Yeah, yeah. H&M. Okay, so for the tyrants who have never listened to Weekly Trash, rude. A, rude, go listen rude. to it. It's very, I feel like our podcasts are very similar. Yes, yes. Literally just like stunning. ranting, trash, <laughs> pop culture, love. garbage. Love. I love it. Love, But- for those who don't know you, yes. let's let's dive into a little bit of your story. Let's so do it. you're married. I'm married. You live in Utah. I live in Utah. You have three kids. I have three kids. I married my husband at 20. And you met on Tinder. We met on Tinder. Please please tell the tyrants what was the first message that oh you sent him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I literally messaged him and said, you get your friends, I'll get my friends, and, and we'll all make out. Who? <laughs> Who who does that? I can't know. Like, like you have the biggest set of balls of anyone I've ever met. But the crazy thing is, I messaged multiple men that it was like, <laughs> who 
who's gonna message yeah. back first yeah yeah any takers any takers i was so horny and desperate but it's funny because none of the girls i was with were down to make out no like they were all like josie you're crazy like you need to just take one for no, the team they Come were on. like byu good mormon girls That's so funny they were like you're crazy well and then wasn't the story that your husband your husband oh, yeah. didn't want to and then his friends were like no you have to because no, we want to make out with exactly friends. my husband is the biggest party pooper goes to bed at eight o'clock i love it and he messaged back oh that sounds nice but like i'm going to bed <laughs> and his roommate was like no his her friends are hot like you need to let them come over that so we ended up going so over funny. there my friends obviously weren't going to make out. So right. they just sat there and watched The Office with <laughs> with his roommates. And then me and him went out. He had just bought a pickup truck. Yeah. And he was like, do you want to go stargazing in my pickup truck? And I was like, stargazing. That is code word like, for let's go. Durf. Suck face. <laughs> We're going to go derf. Literally where no one can hear us or see yes. us. And it's dark. <laughs> yep. And that's what we did. And then we got married less than a year later. Okay. But less than a year. Like that in Utah terms. That's a lot. Long. That's that's long. long. I mean, we... We got engaged after eight months and then Still, had a, that's like a, yeah, that's a good chunk. And had a three month long engagement. Yeah. I feel like that's a good chunk. Did we have sex before marriage? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was my next question. Absolutely. Okay. But then did you have to like Oh yeah, repent? Because you go you yeah, got married. We got, in the we temple. got married in the temple. I I'll probably go to hell, but like <laughs> <laughs> Like I told nobody except for no, all the tyrants. Well, it, it's funny because Anyone who knows me knows like, right. Wh what? You got married in the temple? Like that doesn't fit you. Like I wasn't a virgin at 16. Like right. I am a sexual human being. Like there was no way I was going to marry my husband without yeah. fucking him first. <laughs> like there's yeah, no, no way. A hundred percent. And my husband was like much more active in the church than I was at the time, but I had found him, found him. We had met and like fell in love in a time in my life where I was trying to become more active in the church. Mm. So I, we, we messed up. Right, we, right, we right. And then it was like, okay, let's go through the repentance process. Yeah. So I could go through the temple. Right. And so we went to the bishop and our bishops were like super chill. And they were like, we just want you to get married. So like... I feel like Whatever. that's the hard part with the church is like, it is so case by case oh, on you your bishop. you have no idea what you're going to get. You don't know what you're going to get. You could be like, no. you're not allowed to go to the temple for a year. Oh yeah, like, no. It's no, crazy. When I lost my virginity at 16, I went to my bishop because I was... I felt so bad about it. Yeah. It was also like a really shitty experience and not like a lovey dovey. I lost my virginity type of thing. Yeah. And he wanted to do a, what's it like a trial where you like sit in front of like the, the big, the big guys. I'm so sorry. And I was 16. A trial? I, I literally to see if they wanted to like excommunicate me or something. Oh. I was 16 and my mom, cause my dad's not a member, but my mom is, they're still married. That's how they got married. They, they just knew right for the bad. They loved each other no matter what. And my dad's always been supportive of my mom being a member. She was like, if you do this to her, if you take her in this little trial thing, we will never be back. And he was like, oh, 100%. And he was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Like, we'll just don't pray. Don't do the sacrament. Don't do anything. That is crazy. I know. I do find it interesting that your dad wasn't Mormon, yeah. but technically was baptized. Yes, he was That's baptized. That's the craziest story. It's so crazy. So, because he's from Arkansas, which is like the most random place yeah. to be baptized in the Mormon church. Yeah. Um, but like his like grandfather was somehow involved in the Mormon church and just wanted all of his grandkids to be baptized. So he got baptized, but never was active like ever. That's so weird. And then they met on the cruise ships. My mom was a dancer. My dad was a scuba instructor and he was joking around as he's like taking shots, smoking joints, getting probably STDs <laughs> and is like, yeah, I'm a Mormon. I'm a Mormon. And my mom was like, absolutely. No, you're not a Mormon. Yeah. Like I'm a Mormon. Right. You're not a Mormon hated him and then they fell in love and they got married in this cute little chapel by the Capitol in cute. Salt Lake City and then I ended up having a ring ceremony in that chapel cute. after the temple because I wanted my dad to walk me down the aisle. Yeah, oh, cute. Because I feel like that's so sad when you have like a Mormon wedding and there's people that aren't yeah. Mormon and can't go in the temple. Like me, at every Mormon wedding yeah. I've ever been to. Because even if you are Mormon, if you haven't been married yeah. yet, you don't get to go. Well, and the crazy thing is my mom, people who aren't Mormon probably have no idea what we're even talking about. I talk that. about Mormons a lot. Okay. The tyrants okay. should know. okay. My mom wasn't endowed because she oh, okay. married a man who wasn't Mormon. Yeah, right. And so didn't I didn't mission. grow up with garments. I didn't grow up with any of that stuff. And my mom was like, well, if you're going to go through the temple, I want to go through the temple because I want to do it with you. So oh, we wow. actually did that together. Oh, that's so special. So we got to like have that moment. But it was such a eye-opening moment for both of us because right. we'd never been in it before. And we were like, whoa, that was yeah. crazy kind well, of. And that's crazy for her, like yeah. who lived her whole life. She's like 40. As a Mormon, never, never. knowing what happens in there. Never. That's yeah. Crazy. It was crazy. And it wasn't like her fan, like 
her parents are super LDS. Like my grandpa is the translator for the prophet. Oh, wow. And like a, he was a mission president. Now he's a patriarch. Wow. 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 So like she grew up in a very strong LDS family, but she had never been endowed. And so her family was super excited for her. Oh, I'm sure. And so I think she thought it was going to be different too. Cause they were like, yeah. we're so excited for you. <laughs> and it's like, and she's like, Oh, this is definitely not what I was expecting. Yeah. Maybe a little shocking. Yeah. It was like a shock factor for sure. But she's, I mean, she's still Mormon active, wears her garments and yeah. stuff, but no, so, it was different for where, sure. So where are you like at, like with your faith I, journey right now? I would say I'm a, they call it a Jack Mormon. Okay. But I don't go to church. I think I just keep that Mormon title in respect for my husband because he still thinks he's Mormon. Yeah. Does he like I going to they, church? No, oh, okay. no. That's what makes no sense. Yeah. Like it literally makes no sense. But also what I always tell people is like every other religion that there is, in a general sense, like there's like levels to people's yeah. Christianity, Act- yes. Catholicism, Judaism, yes. non practice. Um, yeah, like person. it's like some people go to church every Sunday, some people go only on holidays, some people exactly. only go for a baby blessing. Like every religion kind of has these levels, except for Mormons. Yeah, it's and like I feel like within out. the last 10 years, like people are now like putting levels to it. Yes, and the older generation, it's like harder for them to come around, but. Oh, no, it's... It's like you can have your beliefs and believe in God and Jesus, yeah. whatever, and like not go to church. No, and that's how I am. Like, right. I do have a very strong testimony in God, like mm-hmm. himself, but I don't believe in organized religion. Yeah. And so that's what's really hard for me because I've had moments in my life where I cannot deny that like there isn't a God right. for me personally. But then I look at the organized religion part and I'm like, this is just a business. Like, yeah. I don't... Exactly. I don't love this. Right. But then like my husband served at LDS mission. He has a really strong testimony in like the scripture part. Right. Where'd he go on his mission? Honduras. Oh, wow. Literally almost died like multiple times. Oh it's my like gosh. the most dangerous mission you can go on. Wow. It's terrifying. He was like held at gunpoint. He saw people get murdered. Oh my gosh. Like, the fact that he survived that and his youngest brother is there right now. Oh my gosh. Why do they even send his people poor if it's so mother, dangerous? They don't send women. They only send men. That's crazy. No, it's insane that they're sending boys there yeah like little teenage literally boys. 18 year old boys like his brother out of high his brother like isn't i don't know how he's alive like That's he's crazy. this tiny little white boy trying to not get kidnapped by the yeah. drug cartel oh like, my gosh it's That's crazy so but no he he has a, like a strong testimony in like the scripture part where uh, mine right. is like totally spiritual so i'm like i can't relate to you at right. all because I don't believe in Joseph Smith. So Interesting. I don't know how to go about this. So I always just say that like I'm Jack, like I'm kind of Mormon. Right. Because there are things that I agree with when it comes to the the gospel, not necessarily the right. religion. Right. So do you feel like you'll baptize your kids? I'm going to let my husband, if my husband wants to do it and my right. kids want to do it, that's the thing. It's mostly my kids. Like if right. my kids want to be baptized – then we'll do it. But I don't think they will because they've never even been to church. Right. And they've got a while. Like your kids yeah, are young. My daughter's, my oldest is five. So she has okay. three years, which is actually terrifying. Yeah. But like we didn't bless my baby that I just had, okay. which I think was kind of crazy to my in-laws. I was going to say. Are, that, they're, they're a bishop. My, my father in law is a bishop. So I right. bet he was kind of like, wait, wait, what? Do you ever feel like living in Utah, like annoyed that you're not as Mormon? No. Like that you're like the outside i have actually never felt like that oh, which is good. weird because i know a lot of people do but i think it's because i grew up with a dad that wasn't mormon right like i've never felt I've, i feel like i've always been in the gray area with it yeah. my entire life interesting and so i don't put that much pressure on myself to feel like i'm included or if i'm or notice if i'm excluded from right. it like i'm just like whatever right like yeah like did your group in high school care at all that no. you like weren't or weren't no yeah. like and i don't think that's normal i feel like a lot of people have a different experience living in utah yeah but mine i just i was like whatever yeah i don't care interesting where'd you go to high school alta okay alta Hawks. good old alta when where did you go when you so did I, you ever go to high school in utah no or just i moved right before but i would have gone to lone peak okay so that's where my husband went oh lone wow peak. oh my go gosh nights. yeah go nights go oh nights. you know i was the lone peak night on the football team in the seventh oh, grade okay, did you play football in the seventh grade what at was your position? i was a wide receiver i mean of course hello. obviously you got the body for it like you're lean <laughs> you're strong gay but... no wide receiver you know <laughs> i grew up to be one my husband was a linebacker if that says anything wow. he's a big boy wow wow, wow. he we lost a hundred pounds on his mission because the food was shocking. It, it was Honduran food. It was oh literally my. just rice and beans. I know. My dad went to Chile for his mission, and he said he, they, they literally ate, like, rats. No, I would die. Rats! No. If I went on a mission and it wasn't freaking, I don't know, Hawaii, I'd be like, 
That's why I had to come out when I was 18 because I was like, there's yeah. no way I'm going to I was going to ask you that when you're on my podcast. Did you ever even like No, it was never a question. Okay. Never. And I think my, my parents had to have known because yeah. like I was doing so much photography work and traveling so much. Like that I'm was busy. Like, I'm not going to give up that that I just yeah, no. built. But no, no, no. There was no way. But like, yeah, I know people that went on a mission and like came out afterwards. I'm like, you just wasted two years. Yeah. Obviously, it's like everything happens for a reason. You learned a lot, I'm sure, but a mission, even like not like the religious side, you probably learn so many good sales tactics. Oh, a hundred percent. Why do you think they all but turn do, into yeah, door to door sales? Salesmen. Literally, like you are going out of your way to knock on a random ass person's door yeah. and try to sell them a, a god. It, literally, yeah. Like. The level of balls that it takes, especially to do when that. you're going to a different country and learning a new language. Yeah, like there's so many things you learn from a mission. Like yeah. I told my my brother-in-law because he's in Honduras right now. He was having a really hard time in the beginning, and I was like, honestly, come home, don't come home. But right. being out there, even not in a Mormon way, learn something. No, that's that's what I was gonna say. It's like I I think as long as you have a healthy relationship, like with your religion, you actually want to go. Because you want to go. Yeah. Like, it's great. Like, don't go because, like, your parents are forcing yeah, you to no. or whatever. But it is, like, a great life experience. Yeah. Especially because the people, like, I feel like most Mormons then, like, come home. They go to BYU. It's this, like, ring around the rosy. Yep. Yep. And that's probably, like, the only, like, that's the most cultured thing you're going to do in yes. a while. Yeah. Or that you've ever done in your whole life. Well, and a lot of times, like, the other, like if you go to these countries where it's there's so much poverty, you do a yeah. lot of service. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think there's nothing better for mental health than to serve other people. Totally. And so like for my brother-in-law, I know that helping other people helped him a ton. Cause yeah. he was like, Oh, I'm finally being selfless. Yeah. And for a lot of these like teenage kids, this is the first time in their lives yeah. that they've ever done something for someone else. Yeah. And it's like, 18 year old boys are a bunch of little rats Literally. out on the street. Like, yeah, put them in a button up and go make them do something good. Yeah. Whether you believe in Jesus or not, it's like, at least they're not out freaking doing beer Who pegs knows and what? whatever it's called. Freaking peg stands. Taking girls' virginity Literally. at a freaking sorority party. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. No, it could be worse. It could but... be much worse. Yeah. Much worse. Like, they'll learn life lessons. So yeah, <laughs> no, what, though, totally. For sure. So, Starting your podcast. We started our podcast around the same time. Yes, we did. And I feel like I'd love to just talk about like, like, do you ever, do you ever go on other people's podcasts? I've been on a couple. Okay. But it's hard because I feel like when, especially, you know, podcasting multiple times a week, your yeah. schedule's busy. Yeah. And as a mom, I don't have enough time in the day right. to go on others. I've been asked to go on a couple where I've had to be like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's busy. And there's not any like crazy popular podcasts close to me. Right. And right. I don't like Zoom. No, I don't like Zoom podcasts. I won't ever watch them. I won't watch them. I'll never do they, them. The sound quality, everything. No, no, no. Not that I'm no. giving good sound quality no. today. I sound yeah. like literally no, I just smoked a You're 12 doing pack. Great. You're doing great. Um, but, but if I lived in LA, I think it'd be a little different. Yeah, for sure. Everyone I don't really go on that many either, but... What was your like? Well, because you're always out of the country, Ty. That's true. That's true. Has <laughs> the voice being That's gone. why. <laughs> but what was your like thought process in starting a podcast? And like, was your husband like fully accepting? Was he like, oh, go yeah. for it? He, so we actually had like a hiccup in our marriage right before starting the podcast. Yeah. I, we had like, we've always had a good marriage, I thought. And then I was like, you know what? Something seems a little off. Like yeah. we're not connecting. Like things are hard. I feel like I'm a stay at home mom and a single mom because you're working all the right. time. So we kind of have this talk of like, I need you to be more of a dad, not just like a working husband and right. just, that just brings home money. Like I also need a husband a and partner. a partner and yeah. someone who's gonna do this with me. And I think if we wouldn't have had that conversation, there's no way this podcast would have worked. Interesting. Like, not at all because he's had to step up so much and like be more of a dad right? Right. because I have to do this now. Yeah. Not have to, I want to, but that conversation I think was pivotal in my choosing to do a podcast yeah. because before it would have never worked. I wouldn't, I don't think I would have had his support as much. I, I mean, he would have been supportive, but not to the extent that he is now. Right, right. And so once we had that like conversation and he started like being more involved, I was like, well, I kind of want something for myself now too. Like you go to work and you make money and, and we were trying to get pregnant. I'd had a miscarriage. And so I was just like kind of in like a negative headspace. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like all I was doing was trying to get pregnant. And I was like. Because you had already had two kids. I'd already so, had two okay. kids. I'm doing the whole, you know, Utah thing. Just popping them out. Yeah, just pop, pop it out. Pop it out. Popping my pussy out <laughs> with all the babies. And I had always kind of wanted to do either a podcast or a YouTube. I just always have that personality. You even yeah. said on my podcast where you knew you were meant to be a yeah. star. Yeah. Like you just kind of know when you're meant to entertain someone. Like totally. if you're an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And I've always had that in me. 
I've always been the class clown. I've always loved attention when it's deserved. Like yeah. when I'm like putting stuff out there. Yeah. I don't like when people like sing me happy birthday. Like don't do yeah. that. No, no, no. Like, jail. Like, jail. No. If you give me a present, I'm not opening no, no, it in front no, no, of no. you. Exactly. But like if I'm doing something funny, like you better fucking laugh. Yeah. You yeah. know? And so I thought about YouTube, but it's too much work. Don't know how to use a camera. So much never work. used a laptop in my life because I never went to college. So I was like, I don't know how to do anything, but a podcast sounds like something I could maybe yeah, figure out. Yeah, I can stand out. and talk I, for I an hour. I can maybe figure it out. And so I started like thinking about the idea and then I was Marco Poloing. Do you know what Marco Polo is? It's like um, an app where you like, yes, you like video yes. each other. I don't use it anymore. It's like, it's like just audio messages yeah, back and forth. Audio right? video messages. Oh, okay. It's like Snapchat. Kind yeah, of. yeah. 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 But like not for like sexting, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Snapchat is where you send nudes. No. I, mm. The kids these days are using no. Snapchat too much. And all my managers are like, you got to get on. You got. I'm like, I'm out. I'm, I'm too so old. confused. I'm is too Snapchat old. like a new social media? I'm no. so, because like Harry Jowsey has like a Snapchat subscription yeah. or something. I'm so confused. No, by the it's whole crazy. Thing. I'm too confused. I can't do no, it. I'm old. No. So I was Marco Poli, my friend, my friend Kate, and I was like, we're so funny. We should start a podcast. Yeah. I said that to her and she was like, oh my gosh, yeah. But I was like dead ass serious. Yeah. And I don't think she was serious. Oh, no. I was going to say, because it's not, there's no co-host. <laughs> no, no. I was like, no, we're doing it. And I had this full on like that's so Raven vision moment where I was like, it's going to be weekly trash because once a week we're going to take out the trash, talk trash, Love. all the things. And she was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and she's really Mormon. And I, oh, okay. I I could say anything at any point. Like, right. I could say fuck. I could talk about sex. Yeah. I could say anything. And that was a little scary for her. because She mm. was like, I'm a young women's president. Like, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. them listening to us talking about cock rings and then <laughs> going to church and asking about it. Okay, what <laughs> what would you be bringing up about a cock ring? Oh, I have a cock ring that no! is the most incredible for women it'd probably be good for you guys oh too. for women it's so you put it on because it goes on the clit <laughs> okay you're it's lying literally the best thing wait so like earth. wait does it okay. wait but, but so it's a car okay. so does it go on the, the it goes on the man it goes on the man but then there's like this part that like it's like bulky and it vibrates and that part it only works if you're on top like the girl I... has to be on top right and it it will give you an <laughs> orgasm no matter what. I have had so many women. I talked about it on Rachel Parcell's episode and I never gotten more clicks on oh, the link in my, my fucking life. That Over is hilarious. 4,000 people clicked the link. I don't know. 4,000 people didn't no. buy it, but like, yeah, right. but that was before I knew about affiliate links. So I didn't even like try to like make money off of it. Okay, well, you make the affiliate link. I'll put it in the description <laughs> like, in the bio. No, it is truly for all the women listening who can't orgasm. It'll change your fucking life. Oh life. my god! It's so good. Wow. So yeah, I talk about all. I talk about anything. Yeah. And she was like, I can't do that. Yeah. So she backed out. I was well. I actually told her to back out because I was like, yeah, I'm not. She was filter. demoted. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to filter myself for you. So right. yeah, you go. You go do your own thing. And I was like, well, shit, I can't do this by myself. Like that's terrifying. Yeah. Like the fact that you do it by yourself is so fucking impressive. I mean, I, you do it. I know, but like I do guest episodes once a week too, yeah, where I yeah. feel like you do solely like you yeah like you have your guests but like if your guests all died you would be okay <laughs> honestly it's funny because i tried guests and like i love having guests on but it's yeah. easier obviously when they're podcasters but yeah i would do guests and people would comment and be like he doesn't let this fucking guest speak i'm just such a rambler like I'm, i love to rant which like, i love and so i don't know that's just how my brain works and functions so it's actually easy for me to do solo but it is crazy. And you doing solo episodes, like, that is hard. Like, we were no, talking earlier. No, like, solos are hard. There's a pool of podcasters, or there's a pool of people that can do podcasts. And then yeah. there's a pool of people who can do solo podcasts. It's and hard. we are in that pool of solos. And it's hard, so. Fuck yeah. No, so I knew I was going to have to do it solo, but I was like, I have to, I can't grow doing it solo because I'm not an influencer. I was going to say, yeah, how was that, like, were you so scared to start it because you didn't have, like, a following or anything? Like, I well, at least had that to, like, fall back yeah. on. Like, I know I at least have, like, some numbers that are going to switch over yeah, which i had nothing my so i started a whole new instagram for weekly trash so my personal instagram which was private had 600 followers and when i started this i wasn't doing it to make money like it wasn't right. like a job it was like this is going to be something like a hobby obviously i hope i get famous and rich yeah. by it but like if i don't like it's whatever that's just like an added bonus yeah and so when I started, I was like, okay, once I get a hundred followers, like a hundred people are going to yeah. listen. Like, oh my gosh. So I recorded my first solo, but I knew I was going to have to have guests to like promote it. So I, my, my plan was I would do one solo a week and then a guest and then a solo and then a guest and, yeah. a solo, and just do one a week. And 
So I record my solo. I upload it. I remember I got 100 downloads and I was like, holy no, shit. That's like, a lot. like I'm famous. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm famous. And I had my sister-in-law had started a podcast. She never ended up doing anything with it. But her and her friends did it together. So it was like three people bringing in like different yeah. audiences. And I was like, how many do you usually get when you podcast? And she was like, oh, sometimes we'd get like up to a thousand. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like a thousand. Yeah. I was like, so you're famous right. like, and I'm nothing. And now looking back and like, that's so crazy that I was like freaking out over yeah, 100. Right. But then I was like, okay, I. 100 I, is like no, a lot. It, is, like, it was a lot, especially when I was literally just starting yeah we're so desensitized to numbers it's so like desensitized. If, like if you were on stage in front of 100 people talking for an hour you'd be pooping right your pants. right and i remember after i released it i had i had all my friends reach out be like you're gonna kill it like you're gonna be the next call her daddy you're so oh my god like they were hyping me up yeah. and i was like i fucking love yeah. all of you i love this and i was pumped i was delusional which i think you have you to have be to delusional. Be. you have to be i'm still delusional i'm still so del- like i came here being like so who, Does Kim Kardashian want to like come who, on? Like, like, who do I need to email to get freaking Usher? Like, what do I got to do? So I definitely was delusional the entire time, but I knew I needed guests. And luckily, even though I had 600 followers in Utah, it's a bubble. Everyone knows everybody. Yeah. And I'm friends with so many content creators and people who have right. large audiences. I feel like you've literally interviewed anyone who is someone who has come out of Utah. They've been on yeah. Weekly Trash. And it's crazy because I would say 95% of them I knew personally before. Right. And so I, I reached out to my closest friends. I was like, hey, would you guys come on the podcast? And they were like, for sure. And so we chatted. I did three episodes with my friends. And then I had a girl from TikTok. Her name is Miranda McHorter. And it was right before all like the TikTok swinger drama happened. Oh. And I went to aesthetic school with her. And so I had reached out to her before. Was she everything. involved in the swinger thing? She she was like part of the drama. I, mm. She didn't swing, but she was like involved in okay, it. Okay, okay. All the speculations yeah. and things. And I messaged her. I was like, hey, people want me to interview somebody from Mom Talk. Like, would you want to come on? And yeah. my hundred listeners can listen yeah, to you. Yeah. And she was like, I'd love to, whatever. Well, two days later, the swinging stuff happens. And I'm like, holy shit, she's coming on my podcast. Like, I'm going to break the internet. Yeah, no, like, literally. What's going to everyone? I'm, bar- I'm like, Barbara Walters. What's her name? No, literally. Nick Vile reached out to her to go on the podcast. Like, she was getting asked by huge podcasters and she, I messaged her and I was like, do you still want to come yeah. on my podcast? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, holy shit. That's amazing. So she came on the podcast and that's kind of where I did my first interview style because before it was just my friends. So we were just kind of like talking right. shit, taking out trash, talking mostly pop culture. Right. But with Miranda, it was more, let's get to know Miranda first, do a dumpster deep dive into who Miranda is, is. I love. And then we'll take out trash. And I loved it. I was like, wait, I want to be the next like Jimmy Fallon. Because of course I want to get the tea. Ellen DeGeneres. Like I want to be a host and I want to interview people and I want to be everyone's best friend. Like love. love. And so after that, it just kind of spiraled into what it is now. And I just got guest after guest. And then once you get one person that yeah. opens the door for you to make a friendship and a connection with someone else. Totally. And then over time, it's like now I have all these new friends, which is incredible. And I also have all these people listening that I feel like truly know me yeah like we kind of said this on my episode with you on weekly trash like it's so vulnerable podcasting and having these people that feel like they know you and they do know you because you are yeah. so vulnerable I, I feel like my tyrants know me more than some of my friends do. yes yes and it's been like the coolest thing and super therapeutic and that was what was so crazy is because i started the podcast because i was stressed about getting pregnant well three months into podcasting i got pregnant oh my gosh so i recorded my last episode of season one two weeks before i gave birth to my third oh baby. my gosh and it just was like so serendipitous yeah the word. like it was super super cool and it was fun because everyone gotta everyone gotta watch that yeah happen that evolution and now i'm just sitting here with freaking thai french like oh what my the gosh fuck oh, is whatever, happening right whatever. now do you feel like it's hard like balancing it with being a mom oh yeah there's so much mom guilt. I bawled my eyes out leaving no. to come here. This is my first time ever traveling without my husband or my kids. Really? Because when I've traveled without my kids, I'm at least with my husband, right. which is like that sense of home. Yeah. And this has been oh my gosh. a whole new thing for me. If I didn't have Carly, my videographer, I would be a oh no. shit case. I would be losing my mind. Wait, so how long have you and your husband been married? It'll be eight years in April. Okay. Wait, so we're the same age, 28. 28. Okay, yep. right. Yep. I'm a Capricorn, January 3rd. January 3rd, Capricorn. Ooh, okay. Because you're July. I'm July. July. Cancer. Cancer. But I have a lot of friends who are Capricorns. JC's Cap- Capricorn. Capricorn slay. And I feel like Capricorns have that like money driven. Oh, like, yes. Yeah, yeah, It's kind of negative. It kind of sucks. Like, because once I found out there was money in this, game right. over. Right, right. Game over. Because 
I was like, wait, the fuck? Like I could be the breadwinner. Yeah. Like I could retire my husband. Right. Like let's go. So do you feel like, like you would actually enjoy being famous and like being in that scene I don't or know. I don't know because I, we kind of talked about this also. I'm, I'm a people pleaser, but I'm not like when I know that I'm not in the wrong, like a hundred percent, I will be like, fuck you. You're an idiot. But if I know there's the slightest chance that like I could have done something wrong, I'm right. like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, what can I do? Like, can I buy you a house? Can I buy you a car? Like, right. let me kiss your feet. Let me suck your butthole. Like, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. And so that, I don't think I could ever be super famous because right. there'd be so many opinions and so many Just so people. many eyes on you. And like, you but can say like one thing. I feel like with the podcast, thing. like. You can say one thing and it can offend somebody and you didn't even mean to offend anybody. Yeah. And that's so scary. Yeah. And that, that would be hard. But also if I was making a million dollars, I would be like, I don't, yeah, right. I don't care. care. Yeah. But like, I'm not making a million dollars. So I still care. Yeah. We got, we got time. We got still, time. We care. I still care. We can get canceled and it will affect I, us. Yeah. Like I will be sad. Yeah. I, it will be sad. But I think, I don't know. I go back and forth cause I see like big podcasters and I, ha- and I see how much work goes into this Yeah. and there has to be a payoff, right? Yeah. Like you can't just do right. this no, for, for sure. little money. You 100%. have to be getting paid. And I see these big guys just killing it. And I'm like, yeah, I'd want that. Do you feel like your husband would like be okay with you? Oh my gosh. Having fame. No, he's seriously, like I said, the most supportive. Like I was so sad to come here and he's like, it's going to be fine. I have everything taken care of. Like, don't worry about a thing. Like, but like I said, three years ago, that wouldn't have been the response I would have gotten from my husband. Right. Because he was a little more. What do you feel like was the like catalyst that made it change? I don't know if it was like misogyny. Is that a word? Misogynistic. Yeah. Misogyny. Like, like, oh, like women belong in the kitchen and right. at home type of thing which i mean like stems from the mormon yes, church yes. like they yeah no for sure i i don't know if that's what it was but there was like there's just this moment where and that's like my husband's like super private and i'm not which right. is so funny because i podcast and i talk about things yeah so i won't go too into detail but there was just a moment something happened and i was like okay this isn't cool this i i don't feel comfortable with this situation anymore mm-hmm. so either you step it up or i'm i'm walking I'm out. out like I need a partner. Yeah. I don't need, I don't need a sugar daddy. Right. And I literally said, I was like, if you're just going to like bring money, then make more fucking money. <laughs> I was like, if this is all, if that's all you're going to be, then yeah. you better be making, 10, then I better you better be, be making $10 million dollars a year. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm sorry. No, I want to be able to drive a G wagon and have a Lamborghini yeah. and have a Birkin. <laughs> like if that's all you're going to bring to the table, right. then fucking bring right. more. And give me two yeah. nannies. Yeah. yeah. Like, like that was the energy. I was like pissed. Yeah. And, I think he finally realized I was like dead ass serious. Right. And he was like, oh, like she's not kidding. And he was like, yeah, you're right. Like I have been a shitty husband. Like I haven't been giving you like the partnership that yeah. you deserve. And he actually came on my podcast during my like pregnancy. Oh my gosh, or my, I need to listen. Or it was my, after I just had the baby. So it was like my maternity leave. Yeah. And we did an episode and we kind of talked about it. And he said, yeah, like I thought that the only thing I needed to do as a husband was make money. Right and be because i think that's just like what's drilled into yeah you. yeah like, like as a guy like make that's money. literally all they tell you is like take care of your family yeah make money like you don't need to coddle your wife and yeah like, and i i don't that's the thing i'm a very independent person like i don't need you to like kiss my ass and like treat me like a princess like i can right. do things myself but i also want to know that if i don't want to do it like you'll do it yeah right right, like, right, right. Like or it, that i at least have like like you said, like a partner who's yeah. like, when I am like doing stuff, like you're at least like cheering me on from yeah. the sidelines. Yeah, exactly. And like even little things like doing the dishes. Like yeah. if you see a dish in the sink and you see me doing it, being like, babe, I got this. Yeah. Like you go. To- and it really was like a flip of the switch. Like he really did change. And now I'm like, I can leave my kids and he knows their whole schedule. Yeah. He knows when they sleep, when they eat, when, and it's sad that before he didn't. Right, right. Like that's sad, but I didn't even know it was not good. Like I, right. I was like, this is fine. Totally. I'm, I'm happy. I'm fine. And then I just hit a breaking point and yeah. I was like, no, like I'm seeing my friends get spoiled and loved and I feel not loved. Yeah, yeah. And you can only deal with that for so long. For so long. And I'm snap. so glad that we hit that point early on. Early on. Because I think if we wouldn't have had that conversation when we did, it would have ended up in one of those situations where you get divorced after like 15, 20, 30 years because you finally can't take it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's too far gone. Yeah. And he's like my person. I love him so much. Like I don't want to do life with anybody else. Oh, I love that. And so I'm so glad we got it situated because I'm like, you're my person. Don't fuck this up. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Don't mess this up. Like if we get divorced, I'm fucking pissed at you. (laughs) I'm dead. So I do, I do French tips once a month, which is like my monthly advice segment. Let's do it. And just like people always write in about like a lot of my audience is girls and they write in and they're like, I 
want to get married. And yeah. I knew that that was like a big thing that you really wanted and you really wanted to get married and have kids. And that was like a step that you were really wanting to do. And it just like, wasn't happening for you. And that's why you downloaded Tinder and stuff. So I was just wondering like, if you have any advice after going through that process and I know you were like so sad about it. And then obviously look at where you're at now, like for sure, just advice for people maybe going through something similar. You know, it's crazy how I was so dedicated to getting married at 19 years old. Yeah, I know. Like, you look back at 19 year olds and you're like, shut up. I want to punch you like, in the face. Like you have so much life to live. I like, know. And it's, I think this is advice that maybe they don't want to hear. Yeah. But it's know your worth outside of like getting married. Mm. Like I was marrying someone to fill a void that like I wasn't good enough until I got married. Yeah. Like I, I wasn't going to succeed. I couldn't move on with my life. I couldn't start things or be something right. until I was married. I had to wait for my person to do, to do things. Right. Right. Don't wait for anybody. Like go start a career, go move to a city you want to live in, go totally. do all those things. And your person will come to you. Totally. But like, Ty, you still need to go out and like I put know. yourself out there. Okay. I know. I know. I know. You like guys will. They're not just going to physically come to your I house know. and knock on your door. But like that's what I need. Like you have to put yourself out there for sure. Yeah. But don't like wait to do anything. Yeah. Like go out, live your life to the fullest and know that your worth isn't dependent on finding your person. Totally. I got really lucky. I really I was going to say, because I feel like people that get married, for that, like just because they want to get married or whatever, when they yeah. get married so young, it's like, it's, it could end very differently than no, where you're at right now. I got so lucky. I even told my husband, I was like, honestly, I would have married anyone <laughs> that came Please. up to me. Because was like, he was the first person that you he, met up with off of Tinder. He was the first person that I ever dated from Tinder. Oh and it was gosh. like, like I had had like little hookups, but it was like, you're weird. That's never happening yeah. again. He was the first one where I was like, oh, we could go to dinner. And you're like, and, and also put a ring on also, it. Also, no, we went ring shopping on our first date. No. As a joke. Like it was a total joke. We went to, um, it's a place called Kyoto. It's not there anymore. Now there's a JCW's there. It's in Provo. Yeah. And there's this diamond, Wilson diamond store across the street. We got sushi and I was like, do you want to go ring shopping as a joke? Which is like so my personality, but, but also so like, wink, not wink, his. remember, remember what the ring looks like yeah. that I picked oh, out. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Oh, I have a really good story about my ring actually. Oh my God. I can't wait um, to hear. It's but, fucking but huge. He, no, he killed it. So we, we go to this diamond store and he's like, this girl's probably crazy because we're just trying rings on and yeah. pretending we're in love making. And this is our first date. Oh our first my date. Gosh. I love that. And though. we ended up after, after the, after, the, make after the make out <laughs> in the bed of the truck. And we just started doing that all the time. We would yeah. just like go like the Texas roadhouse in Orem. That's next to the Jared diamonds. Yeah. If you know where that is. Yeah. yeah. We'd go to Jared's like all University the time. Mall. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We'd go there. We'd pretend ring shop there and it just became a thing. And then we said, I love you. And it started getting serious you know, because after you say I love you, you yeah, get married. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, if you're Mormon, yeah, yeah. Like, I love you, marriage. Yeah. So we started ring shopping kind of for real, but we still kind of, it was still kind of pretend. So we wouldn't ever go with a budget. Right. It was right. kind of just like whatever. Yeah. And we go into the I'm like, do store. diamond stores get mad that you yeah. go in and just try shit on and never buy anything? I mean, you just play the part. <laughs> oh my gosh, you must be a good actress because I, I, I got to go try some diamonds. <laughs> no, you should. It's so, it's so much fun. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we totally should. I, we I just go, go we pretend, I, I, I mean, one, I have to act like I can afford it. Two, now I have to act straight? <laughs> well, no, you can be like. Oh, you're my bestie. I'm, I'm your picking bestie. out a ring. No, no, no. We can be like, I'm your bestie. I'm helping you pick out a ring for mm -hmm. somebody, mm -hmm. your girlfriend mm -hmm. or something. Or like you are getting married and you want the diamond. You don't yeah, want a band. Yeah, you and my, you're coming with me so you yes. can tell my boyfriend which yes, one to get. Exactly. I exactly. Like we could do something like that. So we go, we look at the diamond, diamond rings. I find this one. Again, we're not looking at budgets or anything. So it's just kind of like free for all. Yeah. I fall in love with this ring. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love it. And he's like, yeah, I love it too. Fast forward, like two months later, we start looking like for reals, right. for reals. And we're going back and forth looking at these rings. And I just didn't love any of the way I loved this one. Yeah. And then he kind of brought up the conversation of like, well, should we get you like a lab grown diamond or whatever? Right, and right. I was like, no. <laughs> Bye. I'm like, I, no. Yeah. I honestly like that conversation. I don't know why I don't care. I... I don't care now. Right. But at that moment, I was the first one out of my friends to get married. I also was the poorest of my friends. Right, I was right. like, bitch, like, you're, you're getting me a real diamond. diamond. Yeah, like, yeah. no, no, no. I'm the poor friend. I need to show them that I have a right, real diamond. Right. So, you know, my materialistic ass just over here telling him I need a real diamond. Yeah. And he's like, He's okay. like, okay, cool. It's going to be much smaller than <laughs> yeah, that okay. one. And he's like, no, like, okay, yeah, for sure. 
And then, so he's like, well, then we're going to need to look at like smaller rings. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm such a bitch. I cannot believe he married me after this. Bye. I'm like getting emotional to him. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, that's fine. Oh, no. We're like going ring shopping. A fit. Lo- no, truly <laughs> throwing a bitch flip about it. We're looking at these smaller rings and I find one that I like and I'm like, yeah, this one's good. But he could tell like I did love it. Right. But I was like, no, this one's really pretty. And he's like, okay, get in my car. Let's, let's go drive. And we drive to the place where we had our first make out that first night. Yeah. And he, he's like, I'm not proposing to you. And I'm like, okay. He's like, get out of the car. I get out of the car. We go to like the spot. Yeah. And he was like, I just want you to know that that ring you fell in love with two months ago, I bought it the day we left. What? I'm so single. It's crazy. What do you mean? He literally- On the first date? No. The, oh, no. This wasn't the this, first one. This was two months prior. Oh. Uh, when I fell in love with this one. After we had left, he had Wait, called- but why did he tell you? Because he didn't want me to be sad about the other ring. Right. Because he knew I was really butthurt. And he was like, I'm not proposing, but I just want you to know, like, I have your dream. You're like, then get on a knee, bitch. No, literally. I was like, so what are you waiting for? That's what I'm saying. Like, don't tell me until you're on the knee. Yeah, no. But he knows me so well that he knows that, like, I needed that. just sit on it. Like, I I just needed it. And so I was like, well, where is it? And he's like, it's in my parents' safe. And I was like, well, I want to go see. (laughs) And and you're going to get down on a knee. And you're going to get down on one knee. And so then after that, he proposed, like, a week later. Oh, my gosh. But it was the sweetest thing ever. And it made so much sense because after we went and saw this ring. He got real cheap, real fast. Like we weren't going <laughs> yeah. to dinner. Movie we weren't doing movie home. nights. Like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Like, oh why aren't gosh. we doing things? Yeah. You're like, are you and I'm like, with me? And I'm like, oh yeah, no, it's because you spent your entire savings on my wedding ring. Oh my and his gosh. parents are the most humble humans you've ever seen in your life. Like don't care about materialistic things yeah. at all. And they probably saw this ring as the biggest red flag yeah, that they've ever literally. seen in their life. They're probably like, stay away from this oh woman. Oh my gosh. That's she's so, crazy. She's after you for the money. She's after get you away. for the money, except this was all his money. He oh was dead gosh. ass poor after that. But it all worked out. And now here we are, yeah. married for eight years. And I'm like, so what do I get for my 10 year? Like a new ring. Yeah, right. That's what I was going to say. It's like, even if you got a smaller one or you got like a lap grown diamond or whatever, yeah. like you're 19. Like, no, you we can were upgrade 19 your ring. years old. People think like it's such a big deal. Obviously, it's a ring that like you could wear for the rest of your yeah. life, but also like, you can upgrade it. No, absolutely. Like looking back, I want to punch myself in yeah, the face. I want to yeah. literally take a bat to my head and be like, oh you stupid gosh. bitch. And I feel like most like like really wealthy women that have like fat diamonds, it's like that's not the diamond that they got proposed absolutely to. Absolutely not. They got that once absolutely their husband not. sold the company, did uh-huh, the thing. They uh-huh. worked 40 years for that yeah, ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. But I got his ring from Walmart. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, you and I are twin flames <laughs> because I want the fattest diamond and I want to be a head to toe designer. And guess what? If you even dare spend $2,000 on yourself, goodbye. No, but like that's why me and my husband work because he truly yeah, could care, care less about any of that stuff. He would buy all of his suits at like Costco. Oh my gosh. I was like, no, yeah. babe, like you, you have a career. Like you need to right. go buy real clothes. What's his thing that like he spends money on? What's his shoes like, and vice? cars? Okay, okay. He's a big shoe guy, but even with shoes, he's like the guy that goes into like the raffles. To what like, the heck is a raffle? Like there's these like, uh, not, is it a raffle or like a lottery? It's like a oh, lottery oh. to get shoes right when they come out. Like back when Yeezys were huge. Interesting. There would be these lotteries and you could like get the shoe for like a hundred dollars before it was resold for like a thousand bucks. Oh, gotcha. So he's like a shoe guy where he goes into these lotteries. And so he gets these super expensive, like air Jordans and things like that. Oh like these Honestly, but editions. that's smart. That's an investment. Yeah. So he actually would like sell some of them. Like I have, he right. got me a pair of Yeezys and I was like, these are ugly as hell. I'm never yeah. wearing these. Yeah. And so he like resold them for like 500 bucks. Oh my he's gosh. also like so good with money. It's annoying. That's it's, good. Though. It's good though. That's but good. I need someone that's. When we were first married, it would caused a lot of issues. Yeah, because he was like too strict on it. Too strict. Because yeah. he he's all about like building generational wealth, and I'm like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> Can about I be a part of one of those generations? <laughs> like, but like, I don't care about my great 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 oh, oh. grandkids. No, they're getting jack shit. We Even fucking we fucking Sorry. worked. Like, yeah. let's enjoy it. And guess what? I'm spending every dime I make on this planet. While I'm here. Uh, same. You don't die and take it with no, you. No, no. I'll be going on vacation. I will whatever. Absolutely. Especially once I'm Absolutely. like, if I only know I got a few more years in my life and I've got anything left in the bank, it is going out, out the window. What, I'm going on yachts. Buy, what would you buy today if they said, Ty, you have 24 hours? Like unlimited money. Unlimited money. What would I buy? Like 24 hours to live? You have 24 hours to live. What are you doing? Oh my god. You have gosh. all the money in the world. So it's like, it's too late for me to like go yeah, to you, a different country. Yeah, you can't like fly to Dubai. Um, oh my gosh. I feel like I'd probably go, like, I'd spend on, like, a giant-ass yacht all day. Like, yeah. I love the water. I'm such a cancer. I'm such a water person. Such a cancer. And, like, just, like, a sunny day out in the water, dolphins swimming around. Love. Have you swam with dolphins? 
I even like technically like swam with them, like like not in like a pool, but one yeah. time I did um, jet skiing in Newport and literally I'm not kidding. There was 200 dolphins like following my wake, like as I was in on Newport. it. Yeah. It was crazy. Like, Wait, I like, want to do that. It's so fun. I mean, do- there are dolphins all over. Like whenever you go out on a boat in off the coast, like you'll Wait, see dolphins. Wait, why did I think dolphins like didn't exist in American oh, water? Oh no. If you go on the beach, you'll see them just swimming. Oh my gosh. I see them on my morning walk almost every day. <gasps> It's like so healing. Do you I know love them. dolphins are really horny. <gasps> Did you know they can also be gay? That, well, well, that makes sense. Well, they're really horny. <laughs> Jesus. You know, they like <laughs> people. No. What do you mean? Like people, humans, yes. or other dolphins? No people. Do they have how? Have do you they not? Have, have you not heard of this? No. No, like. Is this true? Or are you bullshitting? I'm me? like dead ass serious. Because wait, I they don't have look, penises, do they? No, they do. Dolphin. I'm literally typing in dolphin. Oh, and, see, it literally comes up. You are lying. <laughs> Says, can a dolphin really commit? Oh okay. my gosh! Okay. Oh wait, that I just debunked. Came. It said debunked. there has never been a verified case. Okay, okay, okay. There's never been a verified case, but dolphins do have sexual behavior and can be very aggressive or even violent when horny. That's crazy. Yeah. So, like, I guess they never like actually did it, <laughs> but they were trying. I'm shook. Yeah. So maybe don't swim with dolphins. Don't swim with dolphins, especially if they're horny. in their moment. <laughs> If they look like they might be a little turned on, do not I, get in the water. Yeah, no. No, no, no. I'm I swear dead. there was like a huge TikTok trend. It was going viral where it was like showing dolphins like humping people. I'm shook. I'm, I can't believe you've never heard of this. No. Are you like a big like, are you on TikTok a lot? Are you oh like gosh, chronically TikTok, online? I'm so addicted to TikTok. It's so bad. It's so bad. Like I could scroll for hours. No, it's I'll literally look up and I'm like, oh, it's been two hours. No. And I have done nothing productive. No, I've zoned out. I don't know I've wasted where I am, two hours I am. of my life watching dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, d- yeah, you're in conspiracy theory TikTok <laughs> no, with the ocean. I'm, I'm all over the place. On t- my TikTok for you page is so all over the place. I might be getting food. I might right. be getting videos of people farting and lighting things oh, on fire. Oh uh, my gosh. Like, I'm dead. Who knows? Who knows what I'm getting? Okay. So your podcast, like you do TikTok trash and you yes. also do like pop culture yes. moments and stuff, yes. much like here on Tyrants. Were you always into pop culture like growing up or what was the thing that like kind of got you into it? Oh yeah. My mom was a magazine whore. Really? Oh my gosh. She would buy every magazine, Allure, Teen Vogue, Vogue. um, I'm trying to think of all the other ones that she would have. Glamour. Yeah. Like all of those. Interesting. And she was so big on pop culture. I was watching The Bachelor and stuff when I was like eight years old. Is it that old? Yes. I'm shook. Yes. My mom is a huge, like E! News, that was our jam. Chelsea oh Handler, uh, Tonight Show that she used to do. Yeah. What, I can't remember what it's called. We would watch all of that. That's so it crazy. It was definitely like inappropriate for me to be watching half of it. No, but, but who cares? I loved it and it made me who I am. Yeah. And my mom, like to this day, it's funny though, because my mom has no social media. None. She oh, so Instagram. she's like really so, into the magazines. So she's really into magazines and like, E News, so e- she's ET getting, Tonight, Entertainment she's Tonight. She's getting fed a bunch of lies then yes. if she's only no, reading she People to, Magazine. No, she'll come up to me and be like, did you know? She's like, and I'm Swift like, is pregnant? No, literally. And I'm like, mom, that's not true. And oh also my. there's so much more to this story. Yeah, you right, right. You're not getting context. No idea. Like she's like, I just think it's so cute. Like Taylor and Travis. And I'm like, do you even know oh who gosh. Travis is? Like, do you know anything? Which I think they're cute too. But like, let me give you the full yeah. rundown here. Yeah. Like, He's going to the Super Bowl. This is what's happening. His mom and her, they people thought they didn't like each other, but they actually do like each other. Oh and my like, gosh. We need to talk You're about giving her the full rundown. Oh yeah, full rundown. She doesn't know anything. That is so But funny. she thinks she knows. Who she are your like knows. who are your like top three celebs? Okay, Justin Bieber, even though We love. I don't love who he is right now. Yeah, you know I'm obsessed with the old JP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I have very strong love for him yeah. back, back then. Um, I would truly crap myself if I ever saw Khloe Kardashian. Love. Chloe's like reality TV queen. She's amazing. Kim's great too, but Chloe just has like this pure heart. You yeah. Know? Like it's just pure. And yeah. I love her. No, she literally has been through hell and back. Hell. And it's still just like the sweetest angel. No. And like, I feel bad that she's so insecure. I know. Because she's so like, you don't need the to face, wear filters. The, the, the face the, tune the face tune's crazy. Like it needs to stop. The face tune's crazy. And the fact that she can't wear. You it. also don't look good when you do it you no. make yourself look worse no with a tiny nose that's like not even and your realistic. jaws like slanted Everything, and it's... like your waist is something out of a freaking disney movie I with know. a disney princess like it's not real it's i know not real. it's crazy because then you see her on the show and you're like wait you look amazing amazing and i hate like she's so insecure she has to wear like sunglasses everywhere i'm like I know. you're beautiful I know. but I, it would be so hard to be 
in her spot with all totally. of the paparazzis all the time and people just up in your face all the totally, time. Totally. Like, I would never want to be that famous. I don't care how much money I have. Like that kind of seems miserable. Yeah, I think like in in my brain, I think I could deal with yeah, no, it. No, no, but, for sure, for sure. Like delusionally, but, I'm like, I could do yeah, it. I'm sure if it actually happened, and you know, in my brain, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just make sure I was like cute. I'm like, I'm sure like it's annoying so fast, or if then they catch you talking, or yeah, you're like just... you're always always scared that at any moment something could happen. You yeah, could, you could do something wrong. Like, exactly, oh, say something no, wrong, like I'm, trip. No, I'm not yeah. that politically correct. Yeah. I could not. Yeah, yeah. I could not. I'd be so scared. So yeah, Chloe, Justin, and then. I'm, oh my gosh, who would be my third most favorite celeb? I honestly <laughs> am obsessed with Jennifer Aniston. Really? I love okay. her. I love her. I'm so intrigued by her. Yeah. Because she's so talented, but she's not married. She has no kids. Is she, does she not have kids? No. No. Let's, let me like fact Wait, check that really quick. I before think I she put, does. No, I don't think she does. Yeah, because right, because who would who would be the dad? Jennifer Aniston. Wait, married? that's crazy. No. Jennifer Aniston kids. No, she has no children. That's crazy. She has no children. She's literally the most beautiful person on most this planet. Most beautiful person. She's obviously not going to have kids at this point because women, yeah, unfortunately, once yeah. we hit like freaking thirty-two, it's like no, don't have babies, that's which is crazy. crazy. So she, she's one that I would be, and I loved Friends. Yeah, I loved yeah, Friends. So cute. Well, yeah, what are your like shows that you're watching? Right now, it's all like reality TV. Right. The Bachelor, Love is Blind, which I'm not cut up on any of these. I know. I wanted to go through the Love is Blind with you, but. Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Love. Those are like the only real. I used to love Real Housewives of Orange County, but then they lost me. Yeah. Yeah. They, they lost, lost me. me. When they left, when they took Tamara out and I was I just know. like, this is stupid. And then, yeah. Yeah. They lost the plot. Wait, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Okay. Oh my gosh. So good. Kyle and Mauricio, what do we think? Kyle and Morgan, what do we think? No, Kyle and Morgan are for sure fucking. Last week when they were on Watch What Happens Live in New York City, she's all grabbing her ass. She is full on taking a hand. No, taking she's a full taking hand, a hand. Full hand of booty. And I think up her post IA. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I I think they're really cute together. No, I love it. Like, I'm so here I for think it. they're a, you wouldn't ever picture them like a no. southern hick cowgirl, no. like with, with this, a six-year-old Beverly, Hills, six-year-old Hills, Beverly housewife. Hills housewife, but it somehow no, works it, perfectly. It works. It's just crazy. I never, I actually, like, I'm gay, but I have the worst gaydar. gaydar like, it's ever? terrible. And, like, maybe just because I hated when people assumed my sexuality yeah, 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 growing yeah, up. Yeah. That, like, even if someone is rainbow backpack, like, yes, sister, like, I will, if they are not out of the closet, not. I will not say that they're gay no. or I think they're no. gay. Like I just, whatever you want to tell me you are, or you want to present as, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to yes. I'm going to wave. And we're going to wave. So yeah. We're going to wave. So I just always saw like Kyle saying she's not like, she's not, yeah. she's not. And then that video came out with her, with the, with the hand on the booty. I'm no, like, Kyle, you're not, not making friends. it easy for me to back you up and be like, listen to people when they se- tell you their sexuality. Believe them. Believe them. I can't believe you when you're basically getting fingered on a step and repeat at Bravo TV. <laughs> but I will say she never said she wasn't a lesbian. No, or yeah. Or bisexual. Yeah. She just said they weren't dating. Yeah. Well, no, there's like a clip of her, I think like long ago on the oh, show really? where she was like, I don't think I like, like I've oh, never yes. been into girls. I remember like, her I saying that. She's like, I could never kiss a yeah. girl or whatever. I mean, obviously, times change. Times has changed. But are you not so sad that her and Mauricio are but done But did you though? hear all the rumors about Mauricio before? No. Oh, isn't the rumor that like he like had sex with Anita? Well, no, there's been rumors for years that he's a cheater. Right, right. For years. And I I just, for some reason, think everybody in California is a cheater. Not in California. Why, why am anyone, I getting dragged into okay, it? Anyone in the public eye, like famous, a pop star, a, yeah. an actor, I don't believe any of them are faithful. I really don't. Especially straight men. Like, I don't believe that any of them are faithful. I mean, Khloe Kardashian is proof that every man yeah. she's dated is a piece of shit. Trash. Trash. Trash, 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 trash. Literally trash. trash. Him. So trash. Like, go to the garbage, never yeah. come out. So I don't believe that any of them are faithful. I know. It is hard in the industry to like believe. When, when there are, it's like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. And when someone repeatedly has all these rumors coming out, it's like, oh, I guess, what do you believe? Well, but and at some I also point, try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, that's nice of you. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but that's I, cute, you dumb but bitch. That's so, so cute. But like when you have all this money, you're so successful. You're good looking. Yeah. And... People women, are just throwing, women are throwing themselves, themselves yeah. at you. 
Do I think it's okay? Absolutely not. Like be faithful. Yeah. But I think some men and women are trash yeah. and they're like, I'll take it. Like no, for they're sure. All trash. And I do think it's like this secret agreement that these marriages have where it's like, Okay, yeah, as I long think as they it doesn't become public. Agreement. Yeah, I think they definitely had an agreement. Not like maybe verbally that they even said. It was yeah, like an unspoken like, thing even for them. Yes, yes. And I'm sure one day she just was like, I'm Correct. done. Yeah. I can't. And also, he was nothing when they got married. She didn't sign a prenup. She's taking his ass to the bank oh, if they get divorced. Oh my gosh. Yes. I think that's why they're not getting divorced. I think that's why they're just separated because it's going to yeah. cost hundreds of millions of dollars in lawyer fees and like it's just gonna be so messy it's gonna be so messy that it's like i'm sure he's like i'll give you literally any money you want ever in your life let's just, just not get divorced. yeah let's just not get divorced there was a saying and it was like so misogynistic that was going around when someone in my close circle who was wealthy was getting a divorce was like they needed to separate it was really yeah. bad he was like a bad person cheater and he had said it's cheaper to keep her literally buy but that's that's true. literally it though. It's crazy. It's cheaper. It's cheaper to keep her. It like in my brain, if someone ever cheated on me, like that would be done. It would be done immediately. Like yeah. I would have to get a divorce immediately. I would never be able to trust you again. Trust is so big. I think when you're literally like married, there's so much more to marriage about like than sex, obviously. But yeah. like how would I ever be able to be intimate with someone and get to like that point where you feel like sexy or whatever? Yeah. If literally I know that you cheated on me, like you did the lowest thing yeah. to me, you have no respect for me. But like, would that be like a break? Like, would you immediately be like, I'm out or maybe it's different. I feel, when you I feel like it's different because with kids. Yeah. But if you ask my husband, he has no shame. He's like, no, I'd leave you in a heartbeat. Right. Like right. he's like, I respect myself too much where I'm like, but our kids, like, I know, I think women still, tend to stay longer because we feel this need to like keep the family together. And I think it's like just because society is so misogynistic that like yeah. it's easy for a guy to like recover after a yes. divorce and get married. Yes. And his job isn't affected. But like a girl, it's you're like wearing wearing this scarlet letter yeah. for the rest of your life. Well, and also as a woman that grew up in a culture where you get married really early, like I didn't have a career. So right. like a lot of women, they right when they get married, they start having yeah. babies and they never like start a career for themselves. So you're actually, screwed and so if financially, you're in a if they get a divorce and their husband doesn't make enough to really provide for them, right. they're gonna have to go out and get a job and then they're gonna put their kids in daycare. And then it's like so expensive and life yeah. is so expensive. And it's like, that's terrifying. It's terrifying. And there's so many women who are stuck in the most toxic, abusive relationships because of that 100%. reason. I know. And it breaks my heart. I know. I feel like that's why a lot of these girls like go on Housewives. Yeah. Is because they they get this opportunity and to they're make like, money. oh my God, this is my time. I'm going to go on one season. Yeah. My marriage is going to look rocky. It's going to get me another season. And then I'm going to divorce his ass because now I'm a celebrity. Yep. yep. There was... Uh, somebody was, I don't know why people tell me that there's things on Reddit about me. Like, please, oh, please don't. Please no, don't. no, 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 never. Somebody, somebody had said that there's this thing on Reddit that said, if Josie ever starts making money, I bet that she'll divorce her husband. Ew. What and I was gross like, thing to say. I'm going to tell that person right now, like, absolutely not because right. um, I love him. And also it's cheaper to keep him. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, no, yeah. but like, I would never, I, I. I want to make money for myself, right. not to like get out of a situation, no, no. but I can see why. And even if you were in that situation and like you were making money to like get out of an unhealthy situation for someone to like go out and say that with like no context, context, no anything? reason, rumor, like, ew, you're so dumb. No, like you're rude and you're gross. Yeah. But when I heard that, I was just like, wow, people actually think that way. Like people, I think it's because people like hate to see an independent woman like having her own business being successful for no reason yeah like they can't imagine why you would do something if you didn't need the money like if no, your husband's sure. paying the bills like why do you need money then yeah once no, again it goes back so to misogyny true. it's like why can't i just work to like I, sure it's gonna make me money and i hope it makes me money yeah. but like, guess what i don't need the money but why do i need to do it for the money oh my gosh ty you just like opened up a whole thing in my brain that's so true it's so dumb i know that it. is so true so dumb no it is it's so dumb People, yeah, wait. So do you ever go on Reddit? No, I've actually made it like a boundary and a rule that you I can't. will never go on. You can't. I went on one time and I, I will never go Don't, on. Don't. People, we talked about this on our episode as well. The people that are on Reddit are the absolute lowest. worst, lowest brow of a human being on this planet. Like true trash. It's crazy. And like, I feel like I have been pretty lucky in this industry. Like maybe you'll have to let me know if you've had a different experience because I know you get different audiences because yeah, you yeah. do have a lot of guests on 
But even before I had a podcast, like with Instagram and stuff, I never really got that much like hate. Yeah. Maybe just because I kind of mind my own business up yeah. until the podcast. Like I was just posting pretty photos of myself. You either yeah. take it or leave it. Like yeah. I don't care. I try to stay pretty unproblematic. Yeah. But so that's why I'm like, what would you be gossiping on Reddit? Like you want to know my address? You want to know yeah. whatever? Like no, it, it's not hard to find out. It's not like I don't know. There, I don't. There's nothing to gossip about. But I think. Also, it's because I'm a guy. No, I was going to say, it's because you're a guy. A like, thousand percent. JC and Chelsea have told me things that, like, they've read or, like, people are talking about or whatever. Or, like, people even will DM them, like, direct message them. Yes. Comment on their YouTube videos, things. And I'm just like, what is up with women being so nasty to other women? No, women, women are hor- horrible, horrible that way. And, like... We, I always talk about like how I think cancel culture is like the worst or whatever, yeah. but women are the cancelers. Yeah. Like we're the ones that are going up to women for no reason. Yeah. For no reason. Like, oh, I just don't like that you do X, Y, Z. Yeah. So let me like make it very clear to you and like right. say the meanest things to you and try to like make everybody else hate yeah. you. And it's always women. Like men, if they don't like something, they're they like, just either okay, don't watch bye. it. Don't they're not going to the start a full on Reddit page yeah. or like a freaking what's, what is it? Like a. Thing where you people sign it oh a petition a petition <laughs> a petition gonna, they're not gonna start a petition no. to like get you off of youtube or get you no. off of tiktok That's like the dumbest thing I've ever like heard. men are too fucking lazy that way especially right. straight men not gay men like <laughs> you're not lazy <laughs> no i mean but, gay like, men can be very catty mm. yes but like uh, men aren't the ones usually doing it. it's the women because yeah. we love the drama right we love the drama and women can just be really mean. Like women always put down other women. Yeah. Do you feel like you have like got like a lot of like hate and stuff with your podcast? I've gotten like a decent amount. Most of it again, isn't to my face. Thank God. It's right. usually like behind Reddit or right. like, well, at least that's good. Some, you don't have people yeah, on the DMs. Yeah. I'll get like reviews, but the reviews are usually again, they're mostly women yeah. and it's, because of like a guest that I had on that. Right. They didn't, or like one thing that you yeah, said. Yeah. And like, they're coming from an audience that never knew who I was. So right. they don't even know how I talk or anything. Right. So they, they're pretty harsh. Yeah. Do you feel like now you've got, because you've been doing the podcast for like a year and a half, yeah. right? Almost yeah. two years. Yeah. And so now do you feel like you've got like enough of your support system? Cause when you first started, yeah. it was like start no. from scratch. No, it's, it was so scary when I first got hate comments. Cause yeah. I was like, I don't know how to navigate this. I've right. never put myself online this right. in this way. And also I, I don't have the amount of people backing me up the way I have people attacking exactly, me. Exactly. Exactly. So how like this sucks. Yeah. This but now you feel like sucks. you've got your, now I feel like if I get one hate comment, there'll be people coming after that person. Oh my gosh. Being like, okay. I mean, that's you good. You suck, which I don't want that either. Like don't fight fire with no, fire, but yeah, also but like, like, yeah, they I suck. I want support. Yeah. 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 Because you still, I feel like you talk a lot about your so, your personal life on your podcast, yeah. but your your page is still like private. Yeah, and your your podcast yeah. page is just podcast stuff. It's because I don't. There's creepers out there. Yeah, there's creepers, and like if people want to share their kids on social media, that's totally you. And like I'll still sometimes like you'll you'll see Banks a lot, which is right. my baby. Right. Um, and like a randomly you'll see a picture of Bentley, who's my five year old, and Brooks, who's my three year old. But I don't want Weekly Trash to be like my family no, page. Yeah, like, yeah. It's you're not trying me. to be a mommy blogger. Yeah, it's me and it's my content. It has nothing to do with yeah. my kids. And it sucks because like obviously I want to show everybody how cute my kids are. And there's a yeah. lot of people who listen who want to see what they look like. And I'm like, yeah, try to add me as a friend on my right. personal and I'll totally accept you right, as long right. as you're not like some creepy looking man. Totally. I feel like you should start a... I mean, maybe not another page. I don't want to put more on your, more on your, another page, but like, I do feel like, or maybe even just on weekly trash. I do feel like you should start like posting more just about you. Like even just like photos of your life, your outfits, like you're traveling. Like, I I don't know. I feel like your audience now that, especially you have an audience, they'd be so interested in that. People love seeing behind the scenes and you know, you're traveling and all that. Well, and it's, it's fun and I like sharing it. Yeah. I love it. And like, you like your outfits. So I'm like, let's, let's materialize it. Mama. For sure. And I think, in the beginning, I was so nervous to like share more about me because right. I was like, people don't care. People just, people just want to listen to the guests. People just right. care about the guests yeah. because I was just starting. I was really insecure about it. And then over time I was like, well, the people staying, they're not staying for the guests. Yeah. They're staying because of me. So why am I not showing more of and me? I actually find that there are podcasts that like I'll listen to all of them and I'll listen to like all their guests and whatever. Yeah. But then like call her daddy, for instance, yes. like love her. But like that's just I'm not her target yeah, demographic. No. Yeah. 
And so I only listen to her as if I like the guys. Same. And that's kind of the opposite of what you want. You want yes. people to be listening like for you all the time. If people get so attached to you having a guest and then you have a guest on and they don't like the guest, then they're not going to listen to it. Yep. You want people to be so obsessed with you that they don't care who the guest is. They're Absolutely. just like, I want to listen to Josie talk for the next hour. And she's so good at interviewing people or whatever. You know, I don't feel like Alex Cooper has positioned herself to be like her, her interview style is too bullet listy for me. Uh, yeah. I was going to say it's like it's very not conversational. rehearsed. It's on a card. It's not like conversational. She's not like playing tennis with the person, you know, no. it's very like, okay, we're hitting this mark. We're hitting this yeah. question, which is crazy. Cause that's not how she started. I know it's so she, weird. She like made this pivot, this like rebrand where now it's, she's the next freaking Oprah, literally. Oprah Winfrey. Literally, literally like, but no, I'm the same way. Like I only listen to like the ones where I'm like, oh, like John Mayer's on. Yeah. Oh, I love John Mayer. Exactly. I'm going to listen to that. Yeah, yeah. You know, Cole Sprouse smoking a cigarette. I want to listen to that one, yeah, you know? Totally. But I definitely am not like a every single episode person. And right. that's when I, it like clicked to me like, oh, well, those people that listen to that one are still listening and they, yeah. they're engaging in my content and they're messaging me. Totally. And that's our thing is it's scary getting bigger because I pride myself in really like trying to engage with my audience. I talk about that all the time. Like I pretty much respond to every single DM yes. the last few months since I've been traveling, I've been slacking at it, but I've been that way ever since yeah. my Instagram started because it's like, yeah, if you, if someone else is taking the time to like care about your life, listen to the podcast yeah. and you have something to say about a certain episode or something, I want to be engaging with you. I don't yes. want to be like, thanks for listening. Bye. No, literally. Like, even if I get all, th all I can do that day is like heart it. Like, I want to make sure I can. Like, totally. I'm not perfect. So don't come after me. If yeah. You it it gets respond. harder the bigger it gets. Yeah. Because sure. I do have like the ones in the request that like, I just don't have the time. Yeah. And then it, after a while they delete them. Yeah. Wait, what? Like once you have a certain amount of requests, it can only keep so many in there. Interesting. Well, I'm sure being a mom also, it's like, okay, yeah. I already took the time to be away from my kid to record. Yeah. Now I have to be one of the kids. I'm not going to be on my phone the whole time. Exactly. Exactly. But I love that I can still like recognize people's usernames and yeah, faces. Totally. And at one point, like you stop being able to do that. Yeah. And that's when it becomes like I feel a like corporate you still, job. I feel like you still, I mean, I guess maybe not when you have like millions like Alex Yeah, Cooper, yeah, but exactly. I feel like you still, if the, if the people do engage a lot, like you'll always like have those people that you remember that you for lean back sure. on. Like I have people that have followed me for years and like, I don't follow them back or whatever. I've never even looked at their profile, but like yeah. I, I you know recognize. their name, I know their face, I know their profile picture. We talk all the time. We have this like total parasocial relationship. But I mean, which I guess is healthy, but not. It gets scarier the bigger you get for sure. Because I'm so like trusting in people. I think Same. everyone's like cute, normal. And then eventually <laughs> right? I'm like, they'll send a weird message and you're like, hmm. I guess we've been messaging for like a year and like, are you actually a creeper? I don't know. No, well, that's another reason why I don't like show my kids and stuff. Cause I'm yeah. like, we, I, like I thought you yeah. were like a normal person, but then every time, and I still do this, like, I don't care about the numbers. If a creepy account follows me, I will block it. Yeah. Even like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I don't care about the numbers. Like I rather have everyone totally. following me being like a real normal human totally, and not like some scary looking man yeah. or like a fake porn account. Yeah. How many like porno accounts? Do you get... I get tagged in this most shocking oh, shit. Oh, my gosh. So, but I'm like, how is that even allowed? That's what makes no sense to me. Because I feel like I'll even post in a Speedo sometimes and I get, like, flagged. I'm like, what is happening? Girls are putting their asshole out on Literally, these pages. They're asshole with a cucumber in their hand. Literally. And it's like... <laughs> and it's like, it's like, Hi, like you my want, pussy. Yeah, <laughs> literally. You want a massage? Message me at 804. Lick my toes. Like, the it's craziest crazy. stuff. And I'm like, how is this even allowed? I don't even get it. I'm like, block, block, block. Yeah. I'm like, do I want... 10,000 followers today <laughs> or not? I know. I know. No, it's crazy. it's crazy. The internet's weird. Yeah. And that's, but again, that's how you can be successful nowadays is blowing up on the internet. I know. It's, so, a, it's a catch 122 yeah. for sure. But like, yeah, if I make a million dollars, I won't be complaining. Right, right, right. Like if I'm making a million dollars, you guys, and I complain, like, please hit no, me with a bat. Punch me in the face. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. What would you say is your biggest advice for someone who's like wanting to start a podcast or I guess not even a podcast, just uh, as a mom who needed something for herself whether that makes money or not, like what's your advice there? Believe in yourself yeah. and, and be delusional. I think everyone who is in this space or starting anything, they had to be a little delusional. So yeah. you have to believe in yourself. You have to be the one to bet on yourself. You have to be the one that's motivating yourself. And it's not going to be easy sometimes. Like sometimes yeah. you're going to want to quit. And every time I had those moments where I was like, this sucks. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm stressed. This is hard. 
I had to remember that this is a stepping stone. Like right. this is something I have to go over to progress to the next level. Totally. And look at it that way instead of like, oh, this is a roadblock. I'm done. Yeah. Look at it like, no, I got to step over this. I got to work through this because this will get me to the next place. Totally. And then another thing is I, I listen to these like super motivating speeches that mm. are like. Like podcasts. So and stuff. cringy. No, it's like literally like speeches of being like you fucking bitch like get up and work shut up oh my god wait i need to listen to this <laughs> like, okay, you need to not, send me this. not all of them are that crazy but like i played competitive soccer my whole life like i thought i was gonna play college soccer yeah but i got a 1.9 in high school so <laughs> it didn't end up working out but i loved having a coach that like was on my ass right at me like that's what motivates oh me. my god that was like my worst nightmare so i listen to these like whenever i'm in a bad headspace and i just need someone to like snap me out of it i listen to these speeches and there's this one it's by denzel washington he wow. is giving it to a graduating class so it's not as like fuck you bitch get yeah, up yeah. but it is very like motivating and like tells you what's up like yeah. get with it and in it, he says the whole point is like falling forward it's like people always tell you like make sure you have something to fall back on make sure you have something to fall back on but like he never understood that because I never want to fall back. I want right. everything that like pushes me back to push me forward to the next thing, right. like guide me to the next thing. And then he was like, you, what does he say? And it? it's so good. He was like, you, if you don't fail, you're not even trying. Yeah, totally. Like you have to fail sometimes. Yeah. So whatever you're starting, like if you fail at it, that's good. That means that you're getting to the next place. Like right. You have to fail sometimes. And just believe in yourself. Yeah. I and listen that. to these motivational speeches. I will send you the link no, for the speech. Please. And you can listen to it. I always will like be walking on my treadmill and it has like motivational music in the background. Oh yes. And it's like it's like fall forward. Believe in yourself. Oh and I'm like, my god. I'm like, I I'm listening. I'm listening. That I'm taking it so in. Funny. I'm absorbing it. Let's do this. I need to do that. I maybe need a little bit more energy of that in my life. On Spotify, the speech literally says, listen to this every day and your life will change. Wow. Okay. And so I did. I did it for like 60 days straight because I was in a dark, depressed place because really? I was just like overworked. Yeah. I was overworking myself. Yeah. I felt like a bad mom. I felt like a bad podcaster. And I wasn't. It was all in my head. I don't know how you do it as a full-time mom because I even like the tyrants know, like I get so overwhelmed sometimes, especially like during the holidays, if I'm traveling a lot, like whatever to do like two a week and you do two a week as yeah. well, which is a lot. I feel like most podcasts is once a week and to do that with three kids as well. Like you're amazing. No, I'm really not. I'm like literally losing my mind half the time. <laughs> like half the time I'm on antidepressants. I'm on Zoloft. Um, we're just making it work. Yeah. We're making it work. But I do think the biggest motivator for me is my kids. Yeah. Because I'm like, I want to show them that mom can do stuff. And my totally. daughter is a spitting image of me. Really? So out there and wild. And like, she'll, she'll come downstairs to my podcast room and she'll put the headphones on and she'll start talking. Oh to my God. Cute. Like she's going to be a fucking podcast. Wait, I feel like you should record a podcast episode no. of you too, but not, even if you don't post it yeah, no. just for your own memory. No, she, she'll love it. That she'll is love it. So And she'll cute. always say things like, mom, is this for your weekly trash? Oh, that's so like, cute. No, I love it. Freaking, I have tyrants and tyrants, moms. I love you out there. I love tyrants who like post on their Instagram stories, like feeding their kid like breakfast. It's in like the high chair and the music's yep. on and they're like dancing. I'm like, I'm saying pussy puss coats, <laughs> cunt, fuck you. Like gay. <laughs> I'm talking about cock rings. Like I'm like, get your kid out of here. No, no, my kids. That's the crazy thing too, is I don't swear with my kids. Like I am really? a different person on weekly trash. When I'm on weekly trash, I'm with my girls. I'm, yeah. the, I'm the way that I talk with my girlfriends. Yeah. But when I'm a mom, like, I don't think my kids know the word fuck. Oh my gosh. See, I don't know if I'm, I don't think I can turn it off. Like, I tried. I can't. There's a trend on TikTok right now where you have your kid go in the bathroom. Oh, I've and, seen like, it. Say swear it's words. the cutest thing I've ever seen. And they like seen. swear. If I put my kids in the bathroom, I don't even think they would know what to say. They're they, like, what do you mean? They would say be swear like, words? no, they would be saying butt, fart, booty, poop. That like, is that's so what they would funny. Be saying. I think like that's so Utah though too. So Utah. Like. Utah, I, whenever I am with someone from Utah, if I'm recording with someone from Utah, whatever, the like slang immediately comes back. Yeah, I'm like, saying oh my frick and shiz, whatever. And I'm like, ew, <laughs> if I go around in LA and talk like that, like I'm never getting a husband. Shiz. They're going to be like, are you a 14 year old from Wisconsin? Like, goodbye. I got to start doing slander <laughs> on different states. No. Tyrants, I talked shit about South Dakota the other day. So we got to talk Wisconsin. Some of you guys got, some of you guys call me out. I do have South Dakota tyrants. I'm sorry, you guys. I will oh go visit gosh. Mount Rushmore. Maybe I'll do a meetup. No, now you I, Now I got to apologize. Wisconsin, Utah. 
Mount Rushmore is actually really cool. Have you been? I did a road trip. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was talking shit because I was like, who the hell goes yeah. to Mount Rushmore? So you've been. Okay, so been. I'm the only one who does I doesn't. mean, it's not really that cool, but they have really good ice cream. Okay, love. So it's like a cute little town. Okay. It's fine. I don't like road trips, though. I get car sick. So like, I would never do it again. Really? Okay. But, but your husband hates flying. My husband hates flying. That's the thing. My life. So you don't go I, anywhere. I'm not going to go anywhere. <laughs> I want to go to Paris so bad. Just because go. I haven't been since I was five. So I'm yeah. like, I want to go again. And I also want to go shopping one there because it's so much cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. And my husband's like, okay, well, who are you going to go with? And I'm like. Oh, he, he refuses I'm like, to fly that far. I'm like, I will drug you. And yeah. you will fall asleep. Yeah. And we will go. Take an Ambien. But I also, like I told you, I want to go with somebody who knows what they're doing yeah. a little bit. Because I don't know anything. I don't speak well, French. If you I don't need know someone anything. who likes to go and likes to shop and is materialistic, I'm ready and available. No, like I will tell you. We'll take the we're podcast going, equipment. And we're going. We can podcast. Maybe like we'll get lucky in like Victoria Paris or someone. We'll oh. be well there when Done. we're there and we'll do some episodes. Done. And- Us being delusional again. We'll like, <laughs> we'll get Kim Kardashian on. Yeah. We'll, we'll get Donatella Versace. We'll get everybody. We'll have a full on. We'll get the Queen of yeah, England. Queen oh, of she's England. dead. Oh. R.I.P. Not me literally for um, that she was dead. Same. We'll get Charles. Yeah. But Charles, Charles is dying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can get Harry. Maybe. Do we want we, it? Maybe we can get, but Harry, Harry's in California, isn't he? With Megan? Yeah. Oh, so even better. Yeah, and Megan's a podcaster. Uh, I mean, debatable. I mean, she's now with, what she is tried. it, Lemonada? She, oh my gosh. Lemonada. I can't. Like, you so went from many. Spotify to Lemonada. It was so many. What Wait. even is, I've never even heard no, of Lemonada. No, ne- never. I've heard about Dear Media. I've heard about Barstools. I've heard about Spotify. I've heard about iHeartRadio. Radio, Radio, um, Podcast I, One. Like, Never heard of Lemonada. No, never heard of it. But you know what? Maybe that's why they spent so much money on her. They had all awareness. They used now their we're entire about budget. Because now we're talking no, about it. No, it's actually kind of genius. Yeah. We should start our own podcast. Literally. Because that's where the money is. we're not getting at. signed anytime no, soon. No, we're not so. getting signed. We're not. No, let's, let's go sign. Influ- let's do what every other company's doing. And yeah. let's go find influencers who right. don't want to start a podcast. Right. And, say, and force them And to. force them. <laughs> yeah. And say, uh-huh. bring all your following, all of your, all your and people And then here. our podcast will get bigger. Exactly. I love. Ex- we'll like force them to have us uh-huh. on their podcast. Uh-huh. Capitalism. <laughs> that's, Capitalism. That's what's up. I can't wait. That's what's Who are up. your favorite podcasts? Um, the Toast. Obviously you. But oh, I feel well, like no, I can't. Thanks. I mean, you like, can't say that. I can't, I'm here, you. but like, it's obviously <laughs> you. Um, I also love Giggly Squad. Cute. I love... Uh, the Dressed in Lala owner has a podcast, La oh, La cute. Land. Cute. I love her. She's super cute. Uh, what We Said. We love. But I feel like the only one that I listen, the two that I listen to the most yeah. would be You and The Toast. Oh, wow. Gosh. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The Toast is so nice because it's every day. It's every day. I hate when I find a podcast that I love and they do only one a week. Yeah, no. And I'm like, I need more content. I, because, I need more. because I work from home. I need more. I'm always listening to podcasts. I don't have a TV. But see, I actually don't listen to podcasts that much because when oh, I'm really? with my kids, I'm listening to Baby Shark. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's so... another thing. When I have a kid, they're going to be saying curse words and they're going to be singing Nicki Minaj. Like, well, no, I, 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 no. I'm not going to change my music preferences. No, that's, I'm at that point where I thought I was good. I thought I could still play my songs. Right, right. I was playing Justin Bieber in the car. On my way to taking my daughter to preschool. Yeah, that's kid appropriate. And it was I'm the One by DJ Khaled with Justin yeah. Bieber. And I couldn't recall any swear words or anything. So we're oh, like listening. No. <laughs> and in the song it goes, Gucci, uh, what did it say? Booty on a Gucci belt is what it said. Booty yeah. on a Gucci belt. Yeah. My daughter now. No, that's all like, she said. She's like, booty on a Gucci belt. No. And I'm like, ah, oh, don't gosh. say that. Yeah. So now I'm at the point where like I really have to be careful. Shit. I really have to be careful. I'm, my kids are just going to get in so much trouble at school. Yeah. Like, sorry, you're just going to, they're going to have a potty mouth. They're I don't gonna know. Be doing, but it's fine. Every it's, team, it's cute when kids swear. Yeah. No, I think it's so cute. I think it's so funny. That's why they're probably going to get in trouble. Like, say it like, again. Oh, I told them they could say that. Yeah, say it again. Freedom of speech. <laughs> <laughs> they can do whatever they want. Oh my gosh. Just calling people little bitches every literally. second. And I'm like, and sure you say it louder. Say with, it, say it with your chest. Z- literally. Oh my do it. gosh. Yeah, no. Well, I love you so much. I love you. This was so much this fun. This was so fun. I we've love just ranting. been we've been ranting all day. I'll rant I love all it. day. I love it. All day. Thank you so much for coming on to Tyrant. Thanks for having me. Everyone, it's always- it's always so weird closing a podcast no, episode. I know. Especially when you're with the guests. Like when I'm by myself, I'm like, okay, bye. Like, hey, see you guys. See, see you next time. <sighs> I don't know. No, literally. No. But tell the tyrants where they can find you, where they can listen. Oh my gosh. We didn't do this for you. We need to do this for you. Oh, that's okay. But the, here's the thing. 
people listening, they know who you are. <laughs> no, Nobody knows up. who I am, so I guess shut I do up. need to that make it. Not, I need your to podcast make it, is so much bigger I than mine. You need it, to shut up. I need to make it very clear who I am. Okay, oh I'm Jessica gosh. Van Dyke. You can find me on The Weekly Trash on Instagram, two E's, T-H-E-E, because the was taken and Weekly Trash was taken. Fuck whoever has that. We got we to gotta find that out. So annoying. And then TikTok, same. And then YouTube weekly trash you love and that's me it's so Take good if you guys out. like tyrants if you guys are here you guys will love the weekly trash yeah, it's very do. similar Come on over. The rant, the the tyrants and the trashers hell tonight. yes we can you, all take out trash and rant together you do live events don't you i haven't we Utah. should no should i thought we? you have done one i i do a party once a year once a year okay i think we season. need to like co-host a party in utah should we go on tour i'm i'm just saying like, i'm just saying a a but we have to go to South Dakota, Wisconsin, Wisconsin Mount Rushmore for oh sure. Gosh. Gotta check that off the list. Literally. Absolutely. But no, Arizona and Utah for sure. We'll chat. We'll chat. Anyways, we'll I chat. love you, Tyrants. Bye. Bye. Bye.